Hi, my name's JP, I'm in Alameda, and in 16 days, I'm gonna be traveling the world. Global Lights, I'm back in Alameda, and uh, I just did something that's kind of terrifying to me. I just changed my phone plan so that I have phone service when I go out to Southeast Asia. So I did a lot of research about what my options would be, and I was going to, I was just thinking I was gonna have my phone unlocked so I could use local SIM cards. It's probably the cheapest option, but something wasn't right about that because one, I'm locked into a contract with AT&T and I think I would pay probably about $190 to get out of that contract just to unlock my phone. And then I'd have to cancel service, which means I'd lose the current number that I ha already have. And then every time I would move around, I'd have to get a new SIM card. And you know, it's really, it's probably really cheap to, to do that, but like it would require me to spend a little bit of time in each of those places getting a SIM card. A little bit of inconvenience for a cheap price. But then I was listening to one of my favorite travel podcasts, uh, The Extra Pack of Peanuts, and they were talking about this plan that you can get with T-Mobile. T-Mobile will pay all of your early termination fees out of a contract with um, uh, your service provider to switch over to them. And their plans start at $50 a month, and that includes international data and text, unlimited international data and text, and only 20, uh, 20 cents a minute for international uh, calls made internationally, which is really, really not that bad. The only problem with that is that in order for them to pay for your cancellation fee with your current service provider, they require you to get a new phone with them. And this is not what I was planning. So T-Mobile would require me to take this phone that I invested in uh, last year and trade it in for a new one, which is which has some expense to it. They T-Mobile will finance it to you. There's no interest involved in the financing, but it does add to your monthly bill. So it's fifty dollars plus whatever uh, the cost of your new phone would be divided by twenty-four for the twenty-four months that they're going to have. They're going to charge you for it. That made me a little bit scared about my finances. But you know what? I called them and. Uh, despite like a, a somewhat of a gut urge to not do it because I was thinking well maybe if I just just pay the $200 with AT&T just get out of a contract entirely I, I'll be fine and it'll be cheaper I, I just I did it I went with T-Mobile so I'm going to be paying for it the benefits about going with T-Mobile is that I can keep my American number I can make calls with it if I need to and I have a reliable internet and um, texting service. And even if I'm international, if I call using Wi-Fi, they don't, that doesn't count towards the, the 20 cents per minute rate. I get that call for free. It's a really reliable offer. It's just the cost. And that just kind of led me down this road of what are going to be my expenses that I can't get out of while I'm out there and how am I gonna pay for them? Because really I'm just saving up for the daily living and I'm trying to budget about $25 a day just to uh, have a place to sleep, uh, have, a, have food, uh, and then maybe, and then some excursion costs to go see and explore the area that I'm at. So that $25 a day was not counting the recurring expenses that I do have and that I can't get out of. And so I kind of sat down and did some of the math and I have a student loan that I'm still paying off. It's a, from a really long time ago and I've always kind of just kept it around because it's good for my credit score and the interest is like dirt cheap. So that it would be my student loan, this phone plan, and all of the costs for, to maintain a website, uh, any hosting stuff that I have. I might invest in Dropbox or something uh, that will allow me to store things in the cloud. So anyway, there's going to be these all these other miscellaneous costs that you know you don't really think about when you're going out to travel, but are super important and necessary. But now I'm in discussions to to see if I can find work here uh, that will allow me to work remotely. Things are a little bit promising. You know, if you if you just find something that you can do remotely and it's part-time, you can work uh, like a few hours a week and cover th the cost that I just outlined for you, cover the cost of your phone plan and cover the cost of your student loans and that kind of stuff. And if that's the case, 
I'm, I'm down because if I can still work a little to just cover the base costs, um, use the savings for the actual trip and the experience, and then from there, if I can do something with the experience to make a living out there, then I can start covering the cost of the actual trip itself. And so that is the plan right now. Um, but it's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> not, not in, in addition to everything that's just happening really quickly. Like I'm about, I'm leaving the country in 16 days. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. <sighs> Holy smokes, guys. It's already 1030. I just finished editing two videos and, uh, I gotta say, at nighttime, I get really low energy. <laughs> uh, you might have noticed from videos that you w watched previously that I was really, really sleepy in those videos and I just edited them and yeah, so now I'm trying to pep up a little bit because no one wants to see someone who's just like on his last leg. So anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, follow me on all the social medias and subscribe because I'm gonna be posting videos every single day until my big trip to Southeast Asia. All right, have a great night, everyone. And until tomorrow, get off the couch and go do great things. Bye. <laughs>